Right. Mm -hmm. So speaking of avant-garde and unlike anything else we've ever listened to, we are now going to talk about Captain Beefheart and the Trout Mask Replica. And the opening track you heard was My Human Gets Me Blues. And now you're going to hear <laughs> Ella Guru. She do what she mean and she do what she do. Got something for me, got something for you. She show something. back all right fellas this is a this is a crazy one and i got and the production of this album matches the craziness of of what you heard so (laughs) we have trout mask replica which came out june 16th 1969 and it's currently 33 on best ever albums albums of the 60s this is the third album by captain beefheart we talked about their debut album safe as milk way back on episode 13 and that was released in June of 1967. Now, in between Safe of Milk and Trout Mask Replica, he released an album titled Strictly Personal. This was an album that was a reworking of material that was originally supposed to be a double album. And then on top of that, the producer, Bob Krasnow, added s- sounds and psychedelic effects in post-production without Captain Beefheart's input. And that really dates the album, and some people don't really... well. Some people feel like it's not a true representation of Beefheart, and other people say that it's still still a good album. That was released in October of 1968. 1969, Beefheart released this double album of 28 songs on Frank Zappa's Straight Records label. The red cover of the album is a picture of Captain Beefheart in a Quaker hat with him wearing a mask of a real carp that he got at a butcher shop or a fish market. After rehearsing for eight months at a house in Ensenada in the Woodland Hills in LA. The instrumentation for this album was recorded in a single six hour recording session. What? And, what? Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's the legend, at least. This and album then, was re- legend recorded in six hours in one session. A, a lot of it. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. There were a couple songs that were recorded before previously, and then I'll get into it a little bit more. But uh, during this time, also, I should add that this is a whole other iteration of of the Magic Band at this point. The only existing member from the first album that we talked about is is John French on the drums. But the Magic Band was known, Beefheart was known for kicking people out and people leaving. And, and a lot of the people in this band were completely new and also very young. Well, two of the guys, were, I think, were like 18 and 19 when they did this. So fitting with the... Um, the crazy carp on the front beefheart also gave nicknames to all the members of the band so we've got john french on drums known as drumbo we've got jeff cotton on guitar known as antenna jimmy siemens we've got bill harkle road on guitar known as zoot horn rollo we've got mark boston on bass guitar named rocket morton and then we've got beefheart's cousin on bass clarinet called the mascara snake uh, uh victor hayden is his is his real name so you heard you've heard those names in the album um in various points as well and i think the mascara snake <laughs> he was brought up directly as well similar to how the band was on their self-titled album that we talked about beefheart had all the band members including himself live together in a small house um, where they would also practice so working the working and living conditions making this album were horrendous beefheart (laughs) would often berate the band members until they cried there they were forbidden to leave except for grocery shopping trips they would often practice for 14 hours a day and then go to sleep and wake up and keep practicing. The uh, guitarist said his fingers became bloody from Beefheart making him use heavy strings. Uh, the drummer John French in his book, his 2010 book, Through the Eyes of Magic, said that uh, it felt cult-like and described physical abuse of the members. You know, He was also kicked out of the band or left the band at one point after he was thrown down the stairs. And after 
as a result, um, his name initially did not even appear on the credits, even though he was also, he was the arranger uh, of the of the album. A visiting friend described the sit- situation as quote Manson esque, and <laughs> they had no other income and subsisted on welfare and were even arrested for shoplifting at one point. Uh, The drummer has famously said that he lived on no more than one small cup of beans a day for a month. Another visitor described them all as, quote, cadaverous and being in poor health. So that's just the tip of the iceberg, I imagine. According to Beefy, who that's what my nickname for him is now, (laughs) he wrote wrote all 28 songs in one eight-and-a-half-hour session at the piano, uh, an instrument which I add he doesn't know how to play at all. <laughs> he would sit at the piano until he found something he liked, and then John French would transcribe it. So kind of the impetus for this album is that Beefheart wanted to, like a cassette tape, record different parts of sounds and albums and then string them together onto one like long song, almost like the way you would cut up a tape or record different sections on different parts of a tape and then cut them together, almost like a film as well, where the way you could edit a film. So he would take different pieces. John French would take all these different pieces that Beefheart would figure out on the piano, and then he would arrange them and put them together to try to make some sort of coherent thing. So French said that three quarters of the songs were done this way with Beefheart at the piano, while the with the rest Beefheart would just whistle what he was thinking. There were also vocal solos and improvisation on the album, as you could as you heard. Contra to what what Beefheart said about singing at the piano, he's, the band members said that a lot of the songs were written over the course of the year, beginning in December 1967. So there's a lot of like myth making and and Beefheart mm. famously in interviews and stuff made up stuff that didn't really happen 21 of the songs were recorded in a six hour recording session i think i said eight hours before there's some controversy about that as well i I saw different time periods i think the point is that because they rehearse so much and as you heard the album is very complicated they they then were able to record it all at once Um, the vocals were overdubbed by beefheart over the next few days instead of listening to the recordings over headphones like a normal person he would listen to the music through the studio booth and record in there which is why the vocals are only slightly in sync some of the time in reference to another album we talked about there is a fragment from miles davis recording of concerto de aaron Juez that's used as the basis for the bridge in sugar and spikes oh yeah now, i totally picked that out yeah. that was yeah <laughs> I, I tried to find it i couldn't <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight in Vermont and Veterans Day Poppy were recorded um, previously at Sunset Sound Recorders in August of 1968, about seven months before the rest of the songs. Beefheart, so this is where, you know, as we said in that, that first episode about Safe as Milk, you know, he wasn't originally a musician, right? He was a sculptor. He came from this artist perspective. He, I added that later on when he retired in 83, he became a painter and his paintings became influential and sold for a lot of money. He would question everything that was done um, when recording this album and why it was done in a certain way. Now, Zappa gave him carte blanche and artistic freedom to make the album that we have here, which which is understandable because this album is completely out of control. Zappa said that, quote, it was impossible to tell him why things should be done in such a in such and such a way it seemed to me that if he was going to create a unique object the best thing to do for me was to keep my mouth shut as much as possible and just let him do whatever he wanted whether i thought it was wrong or not so you can and that that's definitely evident on this album you get the full range of musical styles on this album you've got blues jazz avant-garde poetry spoken word field recordings interviews with children that happened upon the house uh all sorts of crazy crap. One of the challenging things about this album um, is how unconventional it is. It's got polyrhythm, so instruments played at different tempos. We've got different octave vocals. We've got polytonality, which are instruments played at different scales or chords. Um, bass guitars also playing chords. I saw that on a, a, there's a short Vox video on this on YouTube, which is a nice summary of this album. And the history and get some interviews with music professors and things like that. Um, 
Not surprisingly, this album sold poorly on release. <laughs> Robert Criscow said, quote, I find it impossible to give this record an A because it's just too weird, but I'd like to. It's a very great played at high volume when you're feeling shitty because you'll never feel as shitty as this record. <laughs> <laughs> Lester Bang said this album was, quote, a total success, brilliant, stunning enlargement and clarification of Beefheart's art. He called it the most unusual and challenging musical experience you'll have this year and that purely on a verbal level it's an explosion of maniacal free association incantations well, i love lester bang's uh his writing that was all from his original uh rolling stone review of the album um i have some additional facts oh filmmaker david lynch has called this his favorite album of all time which is you completely, don't say. completely unsurprising to me <laughs> um and it's it's often called Beefheart's magnum opus. I have so many I have so many other good quotes as well. Uh, fil- film uh, Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons, said it took him seven listens to go from hating the album to declaring it was the greatest of all time. I'm not going to listen to this album another five times to get there. It was record inducted into the National Recording Registry, as I said in 2011. So I feel like we could create a whole separate podcast about this album, breaking down each song. But John, will you be revisiting Trout Mask Replica and tell me your thoughts on it? Uh, um, <laughs> I I toyed with doing the whole, perhaps I don't understand this because I'm not a musician, but I, I, I hate this album. I, I hate it. It's uh, without a doubt my least favorite album we've done to give you an idea i score every album out of 50 or out of uh 60 points on a scale for mine and i gave this album a six in total (laughs) out of 60 that high it it, uh, uh, what 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 got points for you john i'm I'm interested to see what create creativity and originality would be the only things that got points for it got that yeah um uh, I I do not have the musical brain that can appreciate this album. It's it's discordant. Nothing sounds good. I I would describe. First of all, it was I, I listened to every album twice, and I did this one, and I actively struggled to to get myself to listen to it a second yeah. time. But then when I once I was in it, I was in the right place, and it it didn't improve at all for me. And I tried to make a change. It actually created sort of sensory aggravation in me this album uh, it sounds like music made by someone who's not well but <laughs> in, in in a in a in a way that makes you unwell too yes uh, i just it's contagious i just don't understand the the i just don't understand this album and i don't really want to understand it because i yeah. feel like to understand this album i'd have to go to a place that i don't want to inhabit um i that's all I can say. That's the best I can I can <laughs> say. It it's it, when Josh described the process of making this, it it sounds yeah, it's it sounds like that. It sounds mm. chaotic, yep. um, unhealthy and um, uncomfortable. And for some people, I think perhaps when they're at specific times of their life, it might provide clarity for them, but uh, it, it didn't connect with me in any way shape or form. End yeah. of my take. Yeah. yeah one of the so we should add that this album is not on spotify and i listened to it on youtube i think you guys did as well it has the full album some of the quotes uh comments in there are hilarious and somebody did say this is what anxiety sounds like which i thought was hilarious well, but matt yeah. what did you think of this album? so that's that's where i was gonna go the, the best thing that i got out of this was reading the youtube comments and i'm yeah. usually not a person that likes reading the comments but there are some good ones in there i, I wrote a couple that i'll share a couple in a minute but uh yeah i i hate this record too and this is it's it, there's a couple of the fact that it's not on spotify and that i had to listen to it on youtube yeah was even made it worse because i would normally like you know put this on my headset and like when i go out for a walk um and 
if 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 I stop it because it's an hour and twenty minutes long, right? So if I yes. stop it and I want to go back to it, I have to start from the very beginning because it won't let me. It, it mm, my phone mm-hmm. didn't save it, so I'm like, crap! I got to go through the whole thing again. And it was just it was a chore, right? And I think that we've talked about this before. This we've and John, I think you mentioned that like you know in the Eric Dolphy episode that that you know Eric Dolphy's like calculus, right? This is string theory, or you know what? Yeah, like yeah. you know this is like <laughs> this is a different level. And and I don't. And I, I did read a little bit about some people's reviews. I did hear a lot of stuff where people were saying when they first listened to it, it sounded terrible. And then after X amount of listens, it was the greatest thing ever or just like this right. brilliant piece of work. Very similar to what Matt Groening saying. And and that may very well be true for a lot of people, but um, I, I don't have the patience. I'm too old to, to put this type of time. <laughs> it, this, is, this is an effort. Um, and it just sounds... It's just very unpleasant. The only thing, there was only one part of, and I, I only think I got through this really once, one true time. Wow. Um, and the only thing that I got was the very end of the album. There was the, what is it, the uh, the Vietnam, what is it Veterans called? Day Poppy. Veterans Day Poppy, that's it, right? Yeah. And that takes like, and there's parts of this where it, like, it goes in one direction and all of a sudden it just, does a wine eating does something totally different and there's Mm -hmm. a guitar part that's just a very repetitive guitar part and it's all the same things of the rest of this album it's discordant it's uh it's it's harsh but after like i'm listening to it for a couple minutes i was like i think i kind of see what's going on here and that's what i think that people that would love this album or say that it's so great i i i can see where they're coming from in terms of like there's in in the mess there is some beauty and there is some Mm -hmm. there's ideas there that are that that do make sense um but it's just it's so much work to probably get to that point and i i just don't want to do it i think it i it was just it was harsh it was terrible and i loved reading the uh the the youtube comments one said this is what guitar center sounds like on a saturday when everyone's (laughs) noodling on different instruments (laughs) um this is my favorite song on the album it's the musical equivalent of getting jumped in an alleyway um (laughs) Ah, the sweet sound of every band member having a stroke, you know, and, and, oh, and played, this, played this for my dog and he established an independent city state, which I thought was a good <laughs> one. But it's just it. Yeah, it's it's art. It's avant garde. It's it's really highly regarded. It's in that registry. It's like, holy crap. Um, but it just sounds like a bunch of people that just learned that are just it's like Bill and Ted playing their guitars in the garage. You know, it's like just trying to make sound and um uh, it's not a pleasant experience at all. It's not why I listen to music. So uh, yeah, no, this sucked. That that was kind of my line of thinking. It got it got into like what it almost got it at, to the abstract of like what is art and like the purpose of making music. And yeah. it's not. This is not enjoyable to listen to, and I can't even like think of a situation where I would want to like put this on for for some reason. Like you said, Matt, there is bits and pieces throughout this album where you can see like where you can hear actual like music and songs and and good parts and his voice is so great as we said back on safe as milk and and he's good and that's evident here as well you can hear his his great like growly voice and even his kind of like stream of conscious spoken word poetry that that does have some power to it but it's completely like doesn't make any sense and it doesn't fit well with the rest of the album there there are bits and pieces as i said that that i really that are you know when you hear them after hearing things in different tempos and they sound refreshing and you know like moonlight in vermont has a has some nice parts to it and that would be a song that they actually played live would play live there's some china pig is like a free association blues song almost that that is listenable mm. um there's funny things like the fast and bulbous that are fast that, and bulbous that is on the the pen pena um song and sugar and spikes to me sounded like pearl jam in a way um god wow but yeah then you get other things that it just it's just so much work to yeah. dig through and the album is so long it's hard to yeah it's hard to listen in one sitting which i tried to do and i can't imagine just just uh listening to this and enjoying it i i'm not that sort of 
musician i was trying to think of a movie equivalent and it's like <laughs> but i mean I, it's it is kind of david lynch it's like it's just yeah like, it's for it's, sure you know like mulholland drive and the like it, it it's not it's like it's like listening to a to a a, 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 a mental breakdown mm-hmm. you know um and and, and i i would probably say like thinking about it now the, the few th- times that I found something that I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting is when I focused on one instrument, mm. right? Because if you try to focus, like if you listen to it as a whole, it just nothing makes sense. But if you can focus, I think probably the way to do this, if you wanted to like try to quote unquote get it would be, I would think to focus on like one guitar part and then just listen to that and then like listen to it again and like piece it all together. Cause I think if you're able to probably pick out the individual parts maybe and then you see like the the brilliance of it all fitting together yeah if you got to call it that but i just think it's just it, it would take so much work and it's just it, yeah exactly when would i put this on i'm not putting this on like at a party you no. know what i mean like i would put this on as a joke i think you know and i would play it for two minutes and then i turn it off because i wouldn't be able to take any more of it yeah you you would write a thesis about this album you wouldn't you wouldn't put it on for Mm-mm. for enjoyment um, there's a lot of good interviews um, on YouTube, uh, or not interviews, but yeah, interviews with former band members of the, recording this album. And there's a guy that's really into it who who studies and analyzes the album. But that's not what I listen to music for. Um, yeah, Pitchfork had a good summation of the album for people that are interested. There are shards of rock and blues and the band's deconstructed grooves free jazz and beefheart's primitive ornette coleman inspired saxophone playing literary surrealism and his obscure yet oddly resonant lyrics outsider folk and his growled acapella songs and postmodern collage and the album's diverse sound sources which include field recordings spoken skits studio banter and even vocals recorded over the phone so yeah i mean if you this is by far the most challenging album that we've listened to it's unlike anything else we've listened to i can't imagine anything being more challenging than this like you know you know what i mean like it's it's not just from the 60s it's like you know what i yeah like i don't see us doing anything yeah i don't see us doing an album more challenging than this yeah i really don't and i think one of the things that you said john or or matt said when we were talking about hot rats is that it's really hard to listen to an album when there's no like beat behind it and no like steady rhythm and or that melody is like, or anything yeah, there is yeah. that there is never a steady rhythm from the bass or from drums or something in this album it, uh, it as a result it keeps you completely on edge and there's mm. no there's no way to get comfortable with the album or to find something to to grab onto in a way right because i the basis of music is right is percussion right it's people repeating rhythms and 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 chanting in in some sort of like rhythmic fashion right and and that is not here at all and it's uh completely (laughs) you want to turn it off the first time you hear it. it and it just makes me wonder like the accolades that it gets you know what i mean like I, I think it would be amazing, like, to be a person that gets this record, right? Yeah. To be in that club where you can kind of listen to this and really get something out of it. Because I, I will say that there's other pieces of music and bands and albums that I've listened to in the past that the first time you hear it, you're like, what is this? And then the more you listen to it, the more you get it. And then you're like, wow. And then you appreciate it. And then you feel, like, almost special because, like, you know, I, I get this, right? Mm-hmm. And I just, like, this has got to be an amazing album to be like that because it's so challenging um and and i wonder the people that that are really like this i mean you have to listen to this multiple times and force yourself and i still yeah. question people like do you really like this like are you really listening you know you really rock in trout Ma- mask replica on the yeah. regular you know I, I just i just don't i just think that's like the cool thing to say that you like but really i i, I don't know i i think that I, I wonder how genuine that that sentiment is. Like Matt right. Groening say it's the greatest album of all time. Really, yeah. Matt Groening, it's the greatest <laughs> album ever. Seriously, so uh, ugh, it's it's just too much. John, what did you think of the poetry on the spoken yeah. word poetry? I, that, I, uh, I really I really don't have much to say about. I I, I just I, I resent this album because we heard. <laughs> <laughs> the Captain Beefheart can make an album that's good, yeah, and that the fact good. that it was so the fact yeah. that it was so long, I just 
I really I don't want to to contribute to the cult of this album because I don't I don't want to I don't I don't want to recommend this to people. I really yes. don't like because even if you do like this, I don't yeah. want more music to sound like this. So <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Please and stop so making this. so <laughs> my take is this is the first album that I'm going to tell people listening to this show not to listen to. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to recommend, and you really have to. If you want a challenge, go for it. But be we're giving you warning, fair warning yeah. before listening. Yeah. Um, I did there's find too, a, go ahead. I, Matt. I was just going to say, there's too much other stuff out there, right? There's especially yeah. nowadays, there's so much music and it just more just keeps coming out. There's lots of great stuff. You don't need to waste your time with this. I don't think. Yeah. I will say that um, I did read a pop mod, pop matters article about this album. That was good. And they, a uh, couple of the people that they interviewed said that his follow-up album to this uh from 1970 called lick my decals off baby <laughs> which is which is a, apparently a fan favorite and um it's a, it's, a title. it's a much um more accessible version of this album apparently and it's it's more refined and um Wait, it's a more accessible version of this album, so he does the same songs in different ways. No, no, like the same oh. style, but it's it's much oh, okay. more like, um, less chaotic was okay. the quote that they said. Um, it's and they said this one guy says, um, in some ways, it's a refinement of what he was trying to do on this album, and a lot of people prefer that album because it's okay. more polished. And the other guy, Gary Lucas, said that. If he had one Beefheart album to recommend, it would be Lick My Decals Off, baby. Oh, okay. So maybe that is maybe that is a foothold into this this deep end that is Beefheart's madness. And maybe that's worth checking out. We are but not covering that, that. We are, we are not are, covering that. It was 502 no. in the 70s. <laughs> okay. So that's not even yeah. close. So maybe, you know, listen to Safe as Milk and Strictly Personal and yeah. then jump to... Uh, to decals and then maybe come back to trap mask replica if you're into to beef heart but that's the other thing too because because safe as milk was so good like i was very pleasant like, i, th I thought yeah. that that was going to be a weirdo album like this but that was that was a nice pleasant surprise um, right yeah so trap mask replica is, is is lives up to its infamous reputation and it's it's one of a kind, folks. So I think we're gonna end there. John's silence is. <laughs> yeah, I think John's mad that we're even like that. You and I keep talking about this. Like, all right. I was excited to talk about this album because it was just so crazy. Yeah. I I'd love to be normally, but we're in we're in a freaking pandemic now. The last yeah. thing I need to do is listen to the musings of a madman. You know, yeah. like who who's not even playing on tune. So like at least if you're gonna be complicated to me, like for God's sakes, play your instrument on tune. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, yeah, I just so there you go. That's if you really want my take, there you go. All right. Um, strong recommendation to avoid. <laughs> strong. <laughs> I, so. I can't I can't recommend this album unless you want to I think that's why it's there. not on Spotify Josh is because Spotify's like people don't need to listen to this we're not gonna <laughs> they're like Spotify's run by a bunch of Johns so that they're not contributing yeah exactly <laughs> not oh, even man. as a curiosity strongest yeah. recommendation to avoid um yeah <laughs> yeah this is worse this is worse than Nico I think that's probably the other album that I probably openly disliked this is worse than that oh. by far yeah yeah Definitely. Yeah, yeah, not even close. One's yeah. just an album I didn't like. The other is an album I would prefer to never know existed. So I, I would never play this song for somebody. They'd probably like punch me in the face or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but hey, it's it's if you want to hear it, it's it's on YouTube and it's archived in the uh, recording, probably ahead of albums that I have listened to hundreds and hundreds of times and brought joy to my life. So, yep. God bless you if this brings joy to your life. But. Um, I don't know if we, we would be friends. So that's probably yeah. a good, good point. Yep. And